Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making news this morning, the latest on a late night shooting that's left a 10 year old in critical condition. The United States surpasses a half a million deaths from COVID-19. I'm Mike Ajachi in Washington. Coming up, we'll take a look at some positive signs regarding vaccines. Taking a look outside with live cam, 49 degrees. Justin is in for Mike. Hopefully he has some good news about warm temperatures. And good morning. It is Tuesday. It is February 23rd. Are we ready at the 23rd of February? It's, it's like we missed a whole week. Oh, I wonder what happened. <laughs> Maybe Justin can tell us about it. Justin, um, we're another just cool front that came in, correct? But it's, I mean, we're talking like a minor, minor cool front. Yes, the, in quotes, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it didn't really cool us down yesterday. It's a little chilly this morning. We've got temperatures in the mid-40s out there. It's jackets to start, but short sleeves this afternoon. We'll get back in the 70s. In fact, I think it'll be a little bit warmer than yesterday. Yesterday was was fairly warm in the afternoon. So chilly start, sunny and warm this afternoon. We will get some showers, though, back in the forecast as we get into Thursday. That's going to be our day where I think our rain chances are probably the highest. It will be cooler, too. We'll get another cool front. We've got some more headed our way. 37 in Kerrville right now, 45 at the airport. 44 Stinson, 44 Castroville, 41 right now in Hondo, 48 in Braunfels. And the forecast calls for 72 by 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 76 for a high today. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. That also means it becomes a little more humid. That brings some changes for tomorrow. We mentioned that cold front Thursday. So pretty busy seven-day forecast. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. But Samuel is back this morning after a busy week last week. Yes. <laughs> and it uh, looks like it'll be a little more quiet today. A little more quiet, but we do have an incident out here. This is uh, 35 at 1604. Uh, you can see they're working on an 18 wheeler there that has been stalled out. So that is blocking uh, that ramp. So watch out for that. So this is again uh, 35 southbound going to 1604 east. Not really affecting traffic too much because of the hour, but uh, we do anticipate more people to be heading out and about uh, throughout today. Looking at the entire region, things are looking uh, pretty quiet. There is some police activity uh, downtown. We're working to find out some more about that. That's what that indicator is. And we do have some construction out east on I-10. Uh, this is at uh, FM 1518, so that might slow you down uh, this morning if you're heading east already, uh, seeing a bit of a delay. And we'll have more coming up. Uh, David, Sarah, back over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Well, San Antonio police say a 10 year old boy was shot in the torso on the city's west side and is now in critical condition at an area hospital. Officers were dispatched to an apartment complex located in the 1700 block of South Hamilton Avenue around 10 o'clock last night. Police say that when officers got there, they found the boy believed to have been involved in an accidental shooting with a handgun. Investigators say they have a person of interest, another boy around 10 years old, who they say they want to question. Police say there were several people inside the apartment union at, unit at the time of the shooting. The historic winter storm was one of the busiest weeks for our local first responders. Thousands of weather related calls were handled between San Antonio Police and the San Antonio Fire Department. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown. He's going to take a look back at those rather large numbers. Stephen? Hey, good morning, David. Well, there's no doubt last week's winter weather created a lot of dangerous conditions for the Alamo City, but that didn't stop first responders from doing their job during one of the city's most critical times of need. Now, the San Antonio Fire Department tells us between February 14th and February 19th, they responded to a total of 9,199 total incidents. Now, just some of those calls included 3,991 EMS responses, 295 oxygen refill responses, and 130 structure fire incidents. Now, the San Antonio Fire Department also helped keep five hospitals in service with water operations, and they also helped with the transfer of patients. Now, during that same time frame, San Antonio Police tracked over 1,400 crash calls for service and helped TxDOT monitor closed highways, but they tell us 20 of their vehicles were actually damaged during the weather event and SAF SAPD says that there was a total of five traffic related deaths uh, relating to the weather from last week. Uh, SAFD also created two rehab units. This was for to respond to structure fires and also provide shelter for people in the fire department as well as residents that were being that were being helped during those initial incidents. We'll have more of those numbers coming up later this morning on GMSA. David Sarah back to you guys. 
Thank you, Stephen. The push to vaccinate Americans urges on as the nation crosses the threshold of 500,000 American lives lost to the coronavirus. ABC's Ike Jachi has the latest from Washington. This morning, a solemn signal. The National Cathedral rang its bell 500 times Monday, once for every thousand deaths. Fathers, sons, mothers and daughters like Ashley Bennett, who just given birth and met her daughter Eliza just once. That's the only time she ever got to see her in person, which breaks my heart. President Biden commemorating the grim milestone at the White House. The day will come when the memory of the loved one you lost will bring a smile to your lips before a tear to your eye. And for me, the way through sorrow and grief is to find purpose. As the nation grieves this morning, there appears to be hope. The average number of daily cases has plunged 74% since January. The average number of deaths also down 38% in the last five days. There's progress on the vaccine front as well. Johnson & Johnson now saying they'll deliver 20 million single shot doses by the end of March. If the FDA grants emergency authorization, which could happen as early as this weekend. Also, health experts are stressing the need to vaccinate quickly as the more contagious South African variant has now been confirmed in 12 states. And in the fight to reopen schools, a new report from the CDC suggests it's teachers, not students, who play a central role in spreading COVID in the classroom. COVID-19 spread often occurred during in-person meetings or lunches and then subsequent spread in classrooms. Yet positive signs this morning as New York and New Jersey announced a return to fans in the stands for sporting events. And in Missouri, a hospital unit cheers as they celebrate a nearly empty COVID unit. And researchers in a lab in Alabama are developing a COVID vaccine in the form of a nasal spray. Human trials begin next week. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Well, here's a look at the latest numbers of coronavirus here in Bear County. 230 new cases being reported. That brings our total number of cases since the start of the pandemic to 193,691. There are no new deaths to report. Today, 608 COVID-19 patients are being treated in area hospitals. 223 are in the ICU and 100 patients are on ventilators. If you were set to receive your second dose of the coronavirus vaccine at the Alamo Dome today, there has been another delay due to the, late, to the last week's weather. The city of San Antonio says the supply for today's second dose appointments did not arrive. So the city is rescheduling all appointments for today at the Dome to Thursday. Same time, same place. 437 and 48 degrees. Still ahead, the IRS offering some relief to Texans who were hit hardest by last week's winter storm. Taking a look outside with live cam, 48 degrees. It looks crystal clear out there. Justin will let us know about maybe some light rain in our future, but what will today look like? We'll talk about it when we come back. Today, Congress is set to hear from former security officials about what went wrong at the U.S. Capitol on July on January 6th. That's when a large group of broke through security at the Capitol and interrupted the counting of electoral votes. Three of the four security officials testifying today resigned under pressure immediately after the attack, including the former head of the Capitol Police. Two of the officials will be speaking publicly for the first time since their resignations. Much is still unknown about the attack and lawmakers are demanding answers. Well, the IRS is extending tax filing deadlines in Texas by two months because of the recent devastating winter storms. Both individuals and businesses based in Texas now have until June 15th to file their returns and pay what they owe. The extension applies to a variety of tax filing and payment deadlines originally falling between February 11th and April 15th. The IRS says residents of other states hurt by the same storms who live in a FEMA declared disaster area will also be given the same filing and payment relief. Millions of people lost power from the storms and nearly a third of Texans still have water disruptions. The European Union will impose new sanctions on Russia over Alexei Navalny's prison sentence. And the Kremlin critic is spending two and a half years behind bars for violating parole when he was flown to Germany for treatment for poisoning. Russia's foreign ministry calls these sanctions illegal and disappointing. The EU says it needs to do more to support those in Russia defending political and civil freedoms. 442 and 48 degrees. Not bad outside already. Still ahead, could delays getting the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine cause it to be less efficient? 
We take a look at what health experts are saying coming up next. And next, a sheriff's deputy is talking for the first time about a rescue of a teenage girl after she met a man online. In this morning's GMA First Look, heroic rescue. The dramatic moment a sheriff's deputy finds a missing 13-year-old girl, all caught on body camera. The terrified Florida teen in the corner of this video, running into the arms of the officer, desperately searching for her. Are you hurt at all? Overnight, GMA spoke to the hero cop at the center of the rescue. She noticed I was a deputy and she came running into my arms because she knew that she had been saved at that point. The teen's grandmother reported her missing after she didn't come home from school on Thursday. A friend of the girl telling investigators she was planning to meet a 22-year-old she met online to go to a motel. And believe it or not, this isn't the only teen abduction and rescue this week. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you about another dramatic case and how you can keep your child safe on the Internet. With your GMA First Look, I'm Arielle Reshef, ABC News, New York. Snow and record low temperatures have stalled shipments and deliveries of COVID-19 vaccines across the U.S. This is resulting in delays for people who were set to get their second dose. So could delaying that second shot make the vaccine less efficient? As Myra Arthur reports, experts say you still have some wiggle room in the timeline. When it comes to the COVID-19 vaccines, it's a waiting game. We know many Americans are awaiting their second dose and many more their first dose. Both vaccines on the U.S. market require two doses intended to be given 21 days apart for Pfizer and 28 days apart for Moderna. But if your appointment for that second vaccine dose was canceled because of weather delays or power outages, the CDC says you should still have time to get fully vaccinated. And that second dose can be administered up to six weeks after the first shot. We're asking vaccine administration sites to extend their hours even further and offer additional appointments and to try to reschedule the vaccinations over the coming days and weeks as significantly more supply arrives. Two letters to major medical journals provided fuel for the argument that with coronavirus vaccine scarcity, people can skip their second doses, immediately doubling the supply for others. But top U.S. health officials say it's too risky. The reason is even though you can get a fair degree of quote protection after a single dose, it clearly is not durable. Last week, vaccination numbers were impacted because of the weather. And as everything begins to get back on track, White House officials are asking states, vaccination sites, and those giving the vaccinations to help the country catch up. If we all work together, from the factory all the way to the vaccinators, we will make up for it in the coming weeks. Here in San Antonio, all the vaccination appointments from last week have been rescheduled for this week. You can find those schedules for WellMed and University Health on our website at KSAT.com. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. All right, 448 and 48 degrees. Yeah, I already have an incident on the road this early in the morning. Yes, we do, David and Sarah. We'll get to uh, that in just uh, a moment. Just an overview uh, of the map here. Still have this police activity downtown. We're trying to find some more information about that. Uh, also, uh, I-10 east of 1604. There's still some construction there at FM 1518. So watch out for that. And uh, David kind of alluded to this. We have a stalled vehicle at uh, 1604 and uh, 35. A little bit of a slowdown there in 1604. And here's a look at that on Transguide. And uh, you see here the uh, looks like a tow vehicle or, or something uh, just arrived here within the past uh, five minutes. So hopefully that uh, does get cleared out soon. Again, the good thing, uh, guys, of course, it is still very early, so there's not as many uh, people on the roads. And, of course, it's nothing <laughs> like we saw last week. There are things like this all over the place last week. So this... This is a good sign that uh, things are relatively quiet this morning. Is that a giant wind, windmill blade that it was carrying? Ah, yeah, that could be okay. what it is. Yeah, th eyes. those are those yeah, are very good big you know, trailers. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I remember I was driving uh, one time a couple weeks ago, and there's like a, a caravan of them. So I think I think it may be right. Yeah, and and Justin, I mean, yeah. we're still awake. 48 degrees. Mm -hmm. I never thought we would be celebrating 48 degrees in <laughs> <No>. South Texas. <laughs> Yeah, it, it feels weird, right? It's, it's been feeling very, very warm in the afternoon, especially. Hey, check out the moon there in the distance on Life Cam. Almost a full moon. We'll get it by the end of the month, but uh, kind of bright there off in the distance. Beautiful shot as we look at the airport. 
And the temperature right now is actually 45, 44 Stinson, 43 Kelly, 46 uh, at Randolph. There we go. Northwest chilly winds at about five miles per hour. Winds are going to stay pretty light today, but they will switch around to the south, and that starts the process of bringing in some moisture this afternoon. 41 Bernie Stage, 42 Rio Medina, 40 in Bandera. We do have some 30s on the map. Places like Tarpley, Kerrville, you're in the mid-30s this hour. 46 Kennedy, 40 down in Victoria. Dew point tracker shows that dew points will stay okay today, but they'll jump up especially tomorrow. We'll get that southerly wind. And then by tomorrow morning, I think we're dealing with some fog around the area. And this is uh, the future cast visibility. Not today, but tomorrow morning around 7 o'clock shows visibility not in good shape. For much of us here in South Texas. So just a heads up for tomorrow's commute. It's going to be foggy. Visibility is going to be down. Temperatures around the state. Only one spot actually below freezing this morning. That's in Lubbock. David's old stomping grounds. 31 degrees there. 41 in Amarillo. 40 in Wichita Falls. 48 in Dallas. You zoom out some. There is nothing that's bitterly cold across the country. Now we're missing some data up here in Minnesota. So it's likely cold. But it's not bitterly cold. 26 Cut Bank, 34 Casper, 37 Salt Lake City, 30 in Washington, D.C. this morning. And this typically happens once you have one of those really big cold pushes across the country, which we know we had last week, right? Uh, things tend to quiet down a little bit. And uh, we get a break for at least a week before anything starts trying to move south out of Canada again. We do have another storm system headed our way. This one's going to dig south. It should be here by Thursday. This will bring us some rain chances, some scattered showers. And as we look at the future cast here, today's pretty quiet. But as we get into Wednesday, clouds fill in. We mentioned the fog tomorrow morning. It'll be hard for those clouds to go away tomorrow. Uh, so it'll be a mostly cloudy day. And then by late in the day into Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, we're starting to see a few showers with our next front. Front moves through. Then I mentioned that storm system up there. Uh, near Washington, some of that energy is going to move in. It looks like we'll just get a scattering of showers Thursday into the afternoon. So the forecast for today takes us into the 70s, 74, 76, I think probably a high today, which is a little bit warmer than yesterday. 75 Wednesday, mostly cloudy. There's that front. Right now, 40% chance of rain. Thursday, notice it is significantly cooler. 57. 60 on Friday, 20% chance of rain. And we'll keep some rain chances going into the weekend. Quite a bit of cloud cover, too. Highs in the 70s, so a little more of an active pattern. But it's all liquid this go around, guys. I think plants, animals, and humans are all confused. Very good. We have no idea. Oh, God. Don't even yeah. get me started on my plants. <laughs> so week, sad. It was, <laughs> it was nine, and now it's 75. Texas, right? Gotta love it. All right, 452 and 48 degrees. Coming up, Bruce Springsteen and former President Barack Obama teaming up for a new podcast. More details on the way. Welcome back, 455. A musical dynamic duo is calling it quits. Plus, former President Barack Obama teams up with The Boss for a new podcast. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's the end of an electronic music era, celebrated an influential duo Daft Punk saying so long, announcing in a video Monday that the partnership is over, with one guy in a robot head blowing up the other guy in a robot head. The French duo Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo and Thomas Bangalter started the group in 1993, knocking out nightclub hits, eventually winning Album of the Year at the Grammys for Random Access Memories in 2014 which it turns out is now their last studio album. No word why Daft Punk is decoupling. But there's another dynamic duo on the scene, Obama and the Boss. So I learned twist and shout. Did your folks say anything? Keep it down! <laughs> They're not making electronic music, though. They have made a podcast together. Renegades, born in the USA, features Bruce Springsteen and former President Barack Obama hanging out and chatting about all kinds of things. The first two episodes dropped Monday on Spotify. Morgan Wallen's still number one on the Billboard 200 album chart. His album, Dangerous the Double Album, spending a sixth week on top and its second week at number one since Wallen was caught on tape using the N-word. Last time a country artist spent that long on top of the Billboard 200, Garth Brooks in 1992. 
And happy birthday to a couple of Disney stars. Mary Poppins actress Emily Blunt is 38 today, while the voice of Olaf in Frozen, Josh Gad, is 40. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. Do your grandchildren just love Olaf? They're not there yet. Oh, they're too young. They're still too young. Oh, they'll get there. But they're loving Mickey. Oh, I love Mickey. Yeah, Mickey's, <laughs> Mickey's it. So, there you go. 457, 48 degrees. Well, still ahead, Congress is scheduled to hold multiple hearings on the riots at the U.S. Capitol from last month. We'll have a preview of what we can expect lawmakers to do. And Netflix making it a little easier to find shows you like the most. We'll tell you about their new feature coming up in Tech Bites. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And making news this hour, a man recovering after being stabbed twice overnight. We've got the details coming up. Plus a first look as Congress is scheduled to hold multiple hearings on the breach of the U.S. Capitol this week. And on a live look outside with a live cam, going to be a warm day today. And we do mean warm, especially compared to last week. Good morning. It is Tuesday, February 23rd. We have made it. We got it. We got through last week. Yep. Kudos sure to everyone did. out there for just being, you know, strong Texans and coming together and getting through this. And I'm and I'm grateful, Justin. Uh, yesterday I went out and played disc golf. It was like 80 degrees. Or yeah, I know it wasn't 80 degrees, but it it felt like I could have been, you know. It felt degrees. really hot, right? Yes. I mean, and the, the way we adapt to these things, it, uh, we're, we're so used to the cold now that when it gets in the 70s, it's like uh, really hot. Wait till we get into the summer. I know. We're going to look back and say, yeah, I wish it were February again. Maybe. I don't know. No, Actually, I don't no know. we went through a lot, so no. <laughs> the answer to that is no. But if you're heading off to school this morning, uh, it is jacket weather. Temperatures uh, mid 40s. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And as we get into the afternoon, just like yesterday, it's going to be warm. You can go short sleeves. Later today, southerly winds will kick in 10 to 15 miles per hour. And as we look at the numbers right now, 45 New Braunfels, 39 Boulevardy, 41 Birdie Stage, 42 in Hondo. So it's a chilly morning with uh, clear skies for most of us. And the forecast does take us up into the 70s, as we mentioned. Those southerly winds are going to do a lot for us. They're going to warm us up, but they're also going to start to bring in some humidity. So it'll feel a little stickier, especially by tomorrow. That may lead to some fog. We've got some rain chances and actually a, a pretty busy seven day forecast. We'll get to that here in just a bit. But now we got to check in on the roads. Looks like things are pretty quiet this morning, this morning right, Samuel? Yeah, really the only uh, thing showing up uh, is this uh, stall of 18 wheeler here. This is at 35 and uh, 1604s. Hopefully it could get moving uh, soon. It's been uh, out there for a little bit. Just to give you a closer look at the area, uh, this is 35 southbound, this is 1604 eastbound, and this is where uh, that uh, stall is there. Looking out east, we still have this construction. Uh, looks like we're going to have it for a couple of days, actually an I-10 eastbound at 1518. So that's just east of 1604. You can see that delay uh, starting to build even at this early hour. Looking at the entire region, things uh, pretty much quiet. This is still showing up as some police activity uh, downtown. And taking a look at uh, 35, because we were talking about that, uh, still relatively good time between New Braunfels and 410, 19 uh, minutes. And here's a look again at the 18 wheeler there. We'll have more updates coming up. David Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, Senator Tony Police say a man was stabbed twice overnight during a fight. It happened outside a Circle K gas station just south of the downtown area. It happened near the intersection of Steve's Avenue and Roosevelt just after 11. SAPD says three men were involved in the fight and ended up stabbing the victim twice in the upper torso and arm. As the victim tried to defend himself with a big rock, police say the suspects then took off. He was detained but was let go because police determined he was not the aggressor. The victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. First responders kept on their toes last week. The San Antonio Fire Department and San Antonio Police Department responded to thousands of weather-related calls, making it one of their busiest weeks ever. Well, yeah, Stephen Cavazos is live downtown. And Stephen, how were some of the first responders able to adapt to these dangerous conditions that they're just not used to? Well, good morning, David, Sarah. Well, there's no doubt that last week's winter weather did create some dangerous conditions here for our city. And despite that, though, the condition, the San Antonio Police Department and San Antonio Fire Department made safety a top priority right here in our community. Now, the San Antonio Fire Department actually created four oxygen refill units as well as two rehab units to respond to these structure fires that provided some shelter for firefighters and residents. 
They also provided an additional on-duty safety officer to respond to the many fires that we were seeing throughout the city last week. They say all in all between February 14th through the 19th, they responded to a total of 130 structure fires. Now, the San Antonio Police Department was also very busy. They helped Texod assist in the closure of some major highways that we saw, but they do tell us that they received over 1,400 weather-related crash calls and did have a total of unfortunately five traffic related uh, deaths that were related to the weather. Now the San Antonio Fire Department did also tell us that all in all, they received a total of 9,199 total incidents last week. So definitely one of their busiest weeks of the year so far. We're gonna have more on these numbers. There's so much to break down coming up here on GMSA. David, Sarah. Thanks, Stephen. It has been more than a month and a half since the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol, and now lawmakers begin hearings on what happened and how to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. It all kicks off today with a public hearing for a joint investigation by two Senate committees. CNN's Britt Conway has more from the head of one of those committees on what we can expect and who we'll hear from. <laughs> We all saw the horror of what happened. What happened January 6th when a mob stormed the U.S. Capitol? Five people died, more than 100 got hurt, and more than 230 have been charged. This week kicks off two hearings by different committees to examine the security failures that led to the breach. Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar is the chair of one of those committees. You can see she was inside the Capitol that day. The biggest question she wants answered what happened and how we can make sure it doesn't happen again. Other questions, why was the response from law enforcement delayed? And how were rioters able to breach the building? There is a lot that we have to unpack. There are four witnesses set to testify Tuesday. The acting chief of the Metropolitan Police Department, the former Senate Sergeant at Arms, the former House Sergeant at Arms, and the former chief of the U.S. Capitol Police all plan to testify Tuesday. They were requested to appear based on their critical roles in security planning for that January 6th joint session of Congress to certify the election result. Certainly the hearing is expected to be a fact-finding mission, but there's also a push to uncover what kind of change needs to happen. Big decisions have to be made, including who will be hired uh, as a new police chief um, and what better protocols can be put in place, what better structure. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Back here at home, a blood shortage emergency still in effect in the Alamo City. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, hoping to fill that need by hosting a blood drive with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center this week. The center says right now, not enough blood is available to treat trauma cases. Severe winter weather last week made things even worse, which is why the rodeo decided to step in and help out. We lost over 2,800 units last week because of the companies and different blood drives that we had canceled. So they allowed us to come over here, use their parking lot. They're inviting a lot of their volunteers to come out and donate blood. Uh, the blood drive continues today and tomorrow from 11 o'clock till 4 this afternoon. You can make an appointment through the Blood and Tissue Center's website, which is listed on your screen. Or is it listed on your screen? All right, well, you go to their website. The officials say people who have received the COVID-19 vaccine are still eligible to donate blood. 508 and 48 degrees. Hey, still ahead, a big tumble for Tesla as Elon Musk loses the title for the world's richest person. And next, COVID is hitting our health and our finances hard. The vaccine will help one, and we have some tax tips to help the other. That's next. And back outside with live cam, walked out of the uh, a building yesterday with a t-shirt on, and I thought, oh, oh, that was a mistake. And then I got out there, it was like hot. Yeah. I'm like, wow, this kind of nice. Yeah. It's going to be even hotter today. Look I'll take to it. Justin Orange got that for you. Coming up, we're watching the morning. Well, tax season, it's here. Your job, health, and finances may look a little different in the year of COVID-19. At one point, 42 percent of Americans were listed as working from home. But according to a poll by the American Institute of CPAs, 71 percent were not aware that working remotely in other states could have an impact on the amount of state taxes owed. So here's some coronavirus tax tips that you can save money with. Yes, I have Hamilton as my Zoom background right now. If you've been online more than you've been in the office, you're not alone. I started a new job working from home, so it was definitely different. Like, I've never met any of my coworkers. 
But did you know where you dialed in from could impact your tax refund? If you work in a high tax state or a state that's separate from yours, now you've got two state income tax returns you're going to have to file. Each state has their own tax laws, which varies by the number of days worked. So check with your advisor. Don't forget about your Roth IRA. Consider increasing your contributions. You will have to pay taxes on it up front, but the withdrawals are tax-free. Tax brackets are like stair steps. And so if you if you take if your income is down, you've gone down the stair steps and you you're paying tax at a lower rate. And if you already have a high deductible health insurance plan, cover the out-of-pocket costs with a health savings account that can grow and earn tax-free and you can use that money to pay your medical bills. Especially expenses your insurance doesn't cover. And Gary Kane does say that if you're questioning your stimulus check, know that you don't need to report your stimulus payment on the tax return unless you fail to get one. In that case, if you report it on your return, it will be included in your refund if you're getting one or a reduction in the amount you owe. Five. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Whatever happened to the 1040 EZ? Oh, gosh. Where'd that form go? <laughs> All right, it's 514 and 48 degrees. Still coming up, more details on Netflix's new feature that automatically downloads content that you like. Plus, a closer look at why Elon Musk is dealing with a $15 billion loss. We'll be right back. Did you know that every single flush flings odors onto your soft surfaces? Then they get released back into the air, so you smell them later. Ew, right? That's why Febreze created small spaces. Press firmly and watch it get to work. Unlike the leading cone, small spaces continuously eliminates odors in the air and on surfaces, so they don't come back for 45 days. Just imagine what it can do with other odors. Millions are saying yes to Allegra, the number one allergist-recommended non-drowsy brand. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin, and unlike Zyrtec, it's non-drowsy. Say yes to the fastest non-drowsy 24-hour relief, Allegra. In a world where temptation lurked around every corner, a league of baby bell cheese helped us realize another snack was possible. Baby bell, join the goodness. Welcome back. It is 17 minutes after 5 o'clock. Elon Musk, no longer the richest person after Tesla shares dropped big time. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a bad day for Elon Musk. The Tesla CEO lost $15 billion Monday, dropping him behind Jeff Bezos as the world's richest person. The weekend comments from Musk about Bitcoin prices being too high sparked a sell-off of the cryptocurrency and Tesla. A new Netflix feature automatically downloads content based on a viewer's history. With downloads for you enabled, the Netflix app will queue up shows and movies that align with your taste. Users can select the amount of storage space they want to dedicate to the recommended material. And finally, Bruce Springsteen and former President Obama are teaming up to share their deepest thoughts. They're co-hosting a new podcast on Spotify called Renegades, Born in the USA. They're discussing a range of topics from marriage and fatherhood to race in the state of America. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great Tuesday. And I just learned David Sears does not have Netflix. How do, how do they know? Because I mean, they know. It's, it's just, like they're inside your brain. Because you want... Like scary. sometimes I think things and I don't no. even say them out loud and the internet knows what I'm thinking. Well, if they're inside my brain, they got a lot of room to roam around. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there a lot of room to roam around out there, Samuel? <laughs> Most of the area, yes. That's funny, David. <laughs> Welcome to the morning show. Yeah. Um, looks like this construction's clearing up on uh, 18 East, uh, 10 eastbound at FM 1518. Uh, so that's a, a good thing uh, this morning. Still have this stalled vehicle uh, reported 18 wheeler there, 35604. We'll give you a look at that in a second. Uh, looking across uh, the region, things look uh, pretty quiet. Lots of uh, green. Uh, you know, basically a, a normal morning, so uh, that's good. Looking at I 10 between uh, Bernie and downtown San Antonio, 25 minutes. Uh, each direction, so that's good. And once you get inside 1604, uh, 12 to 13 minutes, so the fairly normal times. This is I 10 at Callahan, traffic flowing well, and I promised you a look at that uh, 18 wheeler there. And look, they're moving the camera around. 
So that's always a good sign that they're going to uh, be moving this here. There it is, shortly. So that ramp is still blocked. Uh, so uh, watch out for that uh, in the area. But hopefully this gets moving here before uh, the commute really gets going here in the next uh, hour or two, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Justin, I'll take, mm -hmm. I'll take a calm week. Who? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I think all of us will. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, David, what do you watch if you don't have Netflix? Uh, I got other stuff. He lives on a ranch. That's true. The correct Me answer TV. is at 12, right? <laughs> I watch TV. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Uh, beautiful sight outside. We've got uh, clear skies. We could see the moon earlier. It has since set, so uh, that's not there anymore. But 46 degrees north, north northwesterly winds at around 5 miles per hour. We mentioned the moon. We're almost to a full moon. Got this great picture from Skywatcher, who always sends in great pictures. But he said, please don't hate me for saying this. The February full moon is known as the snow moon. How appropriate. Oh. Right on time. <laughs> uh, we're going to end February, though, actually, with some pretty warm temperatures. 41 degrees right now, Bernie Stage, 40 in Bandera, 37 right now in Tarpley, 42 Hondo, 44 Stinson. Uh, it's not too terribly cold outside this morning. 47 in Kennedy, 40 right now in Victoria. The dew points are still low. The air is still dry, but we're going to get a southerly wind this afternoon. So watch what happens with the dew points. They start to increase. 50s, okay, that's not bad either. We're still basically in the comfortable range here, if not pleasant. And then as we get into tomorrow morning, that's when we start to get on the verge of mugginess. 59, close to 60. I think that's going to lead to a little bit of fog tomorrow morning. Then uh, by tomorrow afternoon, we've got dew points in the low 60s. That's when you start to feel it some. It's only going to last for a day, though, because cold front slides through tomorrow night into Thursday morning. There goes the humidity. Uh, dew points tumble back into the 40s. In the meantime, we got to talk a little bit uh, about fog. Not today, but tomorrow morning. I think we have a pretty good shot at it. Uh, some dense fog around the area. So tomorrow's commute could be a little hairier than today just because uh, we'll be dealing with low visibility. Uh, looking at the current setup, uh, we've got mild conditions uh, for most of Texas and down to the south and west. Jet stream still to our north. It's not buckling like it was last week where the cold air is just spilling down the plains. We're more west to east right now, and that's keeping things uh, nice here. It is a little chillier as you get out to the northeast. Our next storm system's up here around Canada. It's going to slide south. Should be here by Thursday. We'll have a front come through, and then behind it with some of that energy, rain chances look decent on Thursday. In the meantime, sunny skies today. Clouds quickly fill in tomorrow morning, along with some of that fog. Here comes the front Wednesday night, and with that, we can see a couple showers. And then I think our best chance of rain is probably Thursday. But even then, this model is not showing a lot. It'd just be a scattering of showers, not a complete washout. Forecast for today takes us up into the 70s for highs. 76 your high temperature this afternoon. And again, those southerly winds kicking in 10 to 15 miles per hour. Really nice day. Tomorrow, 75 mostly cloudy. 40% chance of rain Thursday. 20% Friday. Over the weekend, a 30% chance. Again, not a washout. Weekend plans. They'll be fine, but it will be cloudy, and you will want an umbrella on standby just in case. Uh, light, light rain, 58 degrees. I'm not going to complain. Seems like nothing now. Yeah, nothing. You can stay in and watch TV. True. Where do you guys get all this time to watch all this television? I really don't have time, actually. It's and, Well, it's more of your kids watching. That's exactly right. I know all the kids, yes. That would be <laughs> Disney+. Plus. Yes. <laughs> 523 and 48 degrees. Well, still ahead on GMSA in your morning spotlight, a fantasy action thriller is topping all films on the streaming services. Plus, big news from Olivia Rodrigo. And welcome back. 26 minutes after 5 o'clock movie and music news now. Plus, a project by two guys from somewhat different worlds. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. <laughs> On the surface, Bruce and I don't have a lot in common. He's a white guy from a small town in Jersey. I'm a black guy of mixed race, born in Hawaii. He's a rock and roll icon. I'm not as cool. They're both pretty cool, or at least pretty famous. Former President Barack Obama and music legend Bruce Springsteen have teamed up for a podcast. Renegades Born in the USA features the pair discussing race, marriage and fatherhood, the state of the U.S. and other topics. The first two episodes are available now on Spotify. is officially above my pay grade. Monster Hunter is huge at home. The fantasy action thriller tops all films on the streaming services Voodoo and Fandango Now, with the biggest opening week of the year so far on both services. I know we aren't perfect, but I've never felt this way for no one. Olivia
Olivia Rodrigo is on cruise control. The teen's debut single, Driver's License, leads Billboard's global streaming and sales charts for a record sixth straight week. Humming along in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 48 degrees. Still ahead, the latest on the Colorado mid-air emergency and the investigation into the engine explosion on a jetliner in the skies over Colorado. Plus, President Biden pauses to remember those lost to coronavirus as the U.S. is finally seeing a steady decline in cases. And Dunkin' Donuts has a brand new donut for you to try. What is that? We'll let you know when it's going to be no available. It's 5.30 right on the button. It is Tuesday, February 23rd. Good morning. Thank you so much for waking up with us on GMSA. And Justin, you were just telling us about, you were doing the math, comparing how much snow we got last week mm -hmm. and how much rain that converts to. Yeah, I was just putting in some of the precipitation totals, and we're still a little bit below average for the year. I'll have those numbers here in just a second. But the, the ratio from that snow to liquid equivalent was like 15 to 1. I Meaning it wasn't much rain because it was a very dry snow, but it piled up. It was very fluffy, right? Uh, sort of interesting. And it was because it was so cold here, you kind of got that difference. Not what we're used to. Usually it's big wet flakes. In this case, it was sort of a, a dry, fluffy snow. I don't know how else to describe it, but uh, it was nice. It was. It was kind of like a snow cone. Uh, 38 degrees right now here in Bull Verde, uh, 41 Bernie Stage, 42 Rio Medina, 44 Castroville, 44 Stinson. And looking across the state, just a couple of places below freezing up in the mountains there, Marfa 31, 31 in Lubbock, but nothing that's bitterly cold. We're going to see some really great weather today. Yesterday was beautiful. Today will be equally as nice, other than it will be a little bit warmer. I think we'll get those temperatures up into the mid to upper 70s for highs. 68 noon time, 72, 2 o'clock, 76, 4 o'clock, and then down to 70 by 6 o'clock. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. They could be a little bit gusty during the afternoon. I know we had uh, one issue there on the roadways this morning, Samuel. Is that getting cleared up? Hopefully here pretty soon. This is at 1604 and 35, uh, Justin, and you can see there's some uh, activity there around this. So we understand they're going to be opening uh, this ramp uh, soon. This 18-wheeler's uh, uh, been out there for a little bit now. So this is a closer look at the area. This is 35 southbound at 1604. East, so this ramp hopefully should be opening up uh, fairly soon. Looking across mo most of the area, com we can confirm that construction at 10 and 15 18 has cleared up for the morning, so uh, that won't get in your way. And a lot of uh, green on the map uh, otherwise. Let's take a look at 90 uh, coming in from 1604 to 35, 11 to 12 minutes each way, so that uh, looks good as well. Looking at our travel times from across the region, 19 minutes all the way in on 90 from Cashville, 26 minutes from New Bonfils into downtown, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin into downtown San Antonio, and 28 minutes from the Pleasanton area on 37. Sarah, David, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Well, San Antonio police say they're treating the shooting of a 10-year-old boy as an accident. They say he was shot by another child at a home on the west side of town. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters. Katrina, even though police believe this shooting was an accident, we we understand they've been looking for the alleged shooter. Well, that is right. Officers told us that the uh, other child ran off with the gun after the shooting. The police found the wounded boy, the 10 year old at a home in the 1700 block of South Hamilton late last night. He was taken to a hospital by ambulance in critical condition with a gunshot wound in his upper body. Officers told us they're not sure, but they suspect that the two may have been playing with the gun before it went off. Again, though, they say that they are handling this as an accidental shooting for now. At the time, they had not had a chance to talk to the other child, the alleged shooter. But uh, the last word that we had from police is that they were still looking for him. We don't know yet whether they've tracked him down. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Investigators have revealed new details from that engine explosion on a United Airlines flight over Colorado. And new images are showing the extensive damage to the plane. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, investigators looking into what caused this engine to explode over Colorado are zeroing in on a weakened piece of metal. 
New images released by the NTSB shows the damage to the plane, including a gaping hole under the wing, suggesting some of the debris struck the plane itself. And there were also dings and, and nicks in other places on the wing, but there was no structural damage. Another image shows what investigators believe caused the explosion, two broken fan blades in the engine. The emergency on the United flight from Denver to Hawaii started four minutes after takeoff. According to the NTSB's preliminary investigation, a fan blade broke off, tearing into an adjacent blade. Investigators say the first blade to separate showed signs of metal fatigue. In metal fatigue, you're usually going to find what I will describe as beach marks. Uh, it will be a series of, of marks uh, that you can vi visibly see, oftentimes with the naked eye. The broken pieces of the metal blades, considered key pieces of evidence, have now been recovered. One of them was lodged inside the plane's engine. The other fell onto a neighborhood soccer field. Overnight, the NTSB said the blades were being transported on a private flight to the engine maker Pratt & Whitney's lab in Connecticut, where investigators can get a closer look. Pratt & Whitney says it is actively coordinating with regulators. The NTSB says the agency will compare Saturday's incident to other emergencies in the past. We want to find out what happened so that we can issue recommendations to keep it from happening again. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Facebook will restore Australia's news pages after it banned people there from finding or sharing news on its service last week. The social media giant says it came to an agreement that will support the publishers it chooses. Last week's ban followed months of tension with the Australian government, which has proposed forcing tech platforms to pay news publishers for content. Well, a landslide in Italy's coast triggered the collapse of a cemetery, causing hundreds of coffins to fall into the sea. The century-old cemetery sits on a rocky cliff near the city of Genoa. An estimated 200 coffins had fallen, of which at least 10 have since been recovered. The town's mayor calling it a, quote, unimaginable catastrophe. Authorities have since blocked the coastal area to keep the caskets from floating out to sea. It's 537. It's 48 degrees. Still ahead, Peloton is offering a cheaper alternative to its expensive exercise equipment, but it'll still set you back quite a bit. And also coming up in a few minutes, President Biden and Vice President Harris pause, reflect on the number of American lives lost after one of the after dealing with the pandemic. Let's take a look outside with live cam 48 degrees and clear skies out there shaping up to be a beautiful day. According to Justin Horn, we come back, he'll explain how there might be some rain in our future this week and talk about some of those rainfalls from the snow we got. Welcome back. It's 20 minutes away from 6 o'clock. President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris and their spouses led the nation in a moment of silence last night to honor a half a million Americans who died of COVID. CNN's Melissa Rainey reports on that ceremony and the spark of hope as cases decline. Five hundred candles light the night, honoring the more than five hundred thousand lives lost to COVID-19 in the U.S. We often hear people described as ordinary Americans. There's no such thing. There's nothing ordinary about them. The people we lost were extraordinary. The losses felt deeply across the country. So raw, you know, sometimes I'm grieving for my husband and then I realize my mom's gone. <laughs> she cared about lives. She didn't deserve to go through what she went through. In the face of overwhelming grief, there are glimmers of hope. The number of new cases declining for the fifth week in a row, according to the CDC. We continue to see trends head in the right direction. The end of weather delays to vaccine distribution. I anticipate that all backlog doses will be delivered by midweek. And now efforts to help these smallest businesses recover. The changes announced today will roll back restrictions that disproportionately impacted entrepreneurs of color from receiving relief. But as the fight against the virus continues. Let this not be a story of how far we fell but of how far we climb back up. President Biden is asking every American to take a moment and reflect. We have to resist becoming numb to the sorrow. Remember those we lost and those who left behind. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. It's 542 and 48 degrees. And coming up in a few minutes, after 45 years, why the Cherokee Nation no longer wants its name associated with Jeep. 
Welcome back in your morning consumer headlines. Peloton has a new treadmill that's a little less pricey, but it's still expensive. The tread will cost nearly $2,500, almost half of the price of Peloton's The Tread Plus. The new machine is a little slimmer than the original treadmill with a lower maximum incline and a smaller screen. It will be released in May. Peloton officials say they want to become, quote, a fitness brand and hope this variation will be more accessible. Duncan is featuring more matcha? Matcha. Matcha? That's what that green stuff is. Oh, it's coming up on their menu. It's got blueberry matcha latte and the new matcha topped donut. Duncan calls her beverage a <laughs> Wow. Okay. A fresh tasting experience. It combines a sweetened matcha green tea powder blend with blueberry flavor and a choice of milk, including non-dairy alternatives like oat milk and almond milk. Both are available starting tomorrow. Good job, David. Okay, well, the Cherokee Nation is asking Jeep to stop using its tribe's name on its SUV. Jeep has been selling its Cherokee brand models for about 45 years. The automaker says its vehicle names have been carefully chosen over the years to celebrate Native American people for their nobility and pride. But the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation says having their name on the side of a car does not honor them. Even if it comes from a well-intended place, Jeep says it is committed to an open dialogue with the tribe over this issue. Air travel industry is trying to recover from a massive plunge in bookings due to the pandemic. But now airlines worldwide are dealing with a major safety scare that's grounded Boeing 777 jetliners. Here's CNN's Mandy Gaither with a look at how this latest investigation is impacting travelers. A mid-air scare raising concerns worldwide. Airlines in the U.S., South Korea, and Japan grounding dozens of Boeing 777 jetliners after this fiery incident. A plane heading from Denver to Honolulu suffering engine failure shortly after takeoff Saturday, sending debris crashing down over Denver. I think this aircraft is going to stay on the ground for a while until the inspection uh, process is reviewed and we are sure that it can catch these little minute flaws. Federal aviation regulators order stepped up inspections of Boeing 777s that use Pratt and Whitney jet engines in response. This latest safety scare comes at a difficult time for the global aviation industry as it tries to rise from the heavy losses caused by the pandemic's impact on travel. There are approximately 1,300 777s flying around the world, most of them powered by General Electric or Rolls-Royce engines, and they are not impacted. For Boeing, this comes after a nearly two-year grounding of its best-selling 737 MAX jet following two deadly crashes in Ethiopia and Indonesia. Boeing reported a record loss of nearly $12 billion in 2020. Raytheon, the maker of the Pratt & Whitney engine that blew apart after takeoff on that Denver flight, also taking a hit. On Monday, shares of Raytheon and Boeing fell during U.S. trading. Although it's on a Boeing aeroplane and we all call it the Boeing 777 engine, um, it's a Pratt & Whitney issue and they need to step up very robustly to fix up this engine for their customer airlines. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. So I had to explain to David, back to that Dunkin' Donuts story, what matcha, it's like green tea, it tastes kind of like, I don't know, like it's like hot cocoa almost tastes like, but like with a tea. David's not sold on it. Samuel, you liked the idea. I mean, I think I've had it before, but I don't know if I went on a donut. <laughs> it, looked, it looked a little, uh, no. green. But, you know, I, I, you know, we'll try it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. You know, that's what we need to do. We need to bring it and put it on, leave it on David's desk. Just give me a glazed Dunkin' Donut. We're all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, see Transguide folks there. Thank them for their work, especially last week. They're moving the camera around because that 18-wheeler has been cleared from the ramp at 35 southbound and 64 eastbound. So traffic is uh, flowing well. Really, that was the really only the incident on, only incident on the board. Uh, pretty much green all around. If you are heading to work in the medical center area this morning, just look at Fredericksburg Road, uh, 12, 13 minutes each way. That's uh, fairly normal. So uh, things looking 
good this morning, and I am glad to see it, guys. <laughs> And Justin, you have converted that snowfall into ring totals for us. It's a little early for math, but yes. <laughs> uh, we did some, oh, some someone's got to do the math around here. <laughs> uh, it wasn't much, guys. What I can tell you is uh, only the, during that period where we saw freezing rain, freezing drizzle, and snow, we only picked up really about three-tenths of an inch of liquid, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you convert it to snow, it, it, it does add up. And we had some pretty efficient snowfall. Uh, so far for the year, we're at 2.24. That's still about an inch below average. Del Rio is only at 0.66, so that's below average. Austin also below average. Believe it or not, we could still use some more precipitation, and we do have some in the forecast. There are some rain chances this week, about a 40% shot on Thursday, and some more chances down the line. Not big chances, but chances nonetheless. We could get some showers maybe even a couple of thunderstorms. Outside right now, we've got uh, mostly clear skies, 46 at the airport, 43 Kelly, 43 at Randolph, and pretty light winds across the board. You'll find some 30s up in the Hill Country, Bandera, Kerrville, Bernie Stage, you're checking in in the upper 30s at this hour, 44 Stinson, and then one of the warmer spots down there in Pleasanton, 47. Uh, out in Rock Springs, still showing 50, although I'm not convinced of that, maybe a little bit cooler than that. Uh, 42 LaGrange, 43 Gonzales. And looking at the dew point tracker, we'll see dew points uh, fairly low today, but they will jump up tomorrow. There'll be enough moisture swinging in that we may get some fog to develop tomorrow morning. Front comes through, dew point drops off, and then it comes back up over the weekend. And again, that may lead to a little bit more rain. No fog this morning. There is some closer to the coast. But as we get into tomorrow with that added moisture, we should see pretty widespread fog. So be aware of that tomorrow morning, especially for the commute. Uh, visibilities could come down. Across the state, it's uh, not really cold. We've got 30s and 40s in a lot of spots. 47 Dallas, 46 Houston, 58 down there in Brownsville. And as we zoom out, you'll notice there is nothing really cold. That's pretty typical after you have a big cold outbreak. Things sort of quiet down. The jet stream evens out a little bit and you don't get any huge intrusions of cold air. Uh, that's going to keep us pretty mild down here in Texas. Our next room systems up here around Canada. This one's going to swing through on Thursday behind a cold front should give us some rain chances. So here's how the future cast looks. Nothing today, but by tomorrow clouds move in. It'll be a mostly cloudy Wednesday, especially in the morning. And uh, as we go throughout the course of the day, no rain, I think, during the day. But as we get into Wednesday night, there could be a couple of showers as the front moves in. And then I mentioned that storm system coming through. Scattered showers possible on Thursday. Lots of clouds. And uh, we'll see those rain chances sort of stay with us into the weekend. Today, temperatures will be up in the 70s. For highs, we'll go uh, 76. For high temperatures, southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Winds can be a little bit gusty from time to time. And the extended forecast, 75 tomorrow. Notice it does get significantly cooler on Thursday, 57 with a 40% chance of rain, 20% chance on Friday, and then some isolated chances both Saturday, Sunday, even into early next week. But it's all liquid and temperatures are all warm as we finish out the month of February. I was going to say, this is, this is like regular rain. This is not that fancy wintry mix stuff. This is just like it's the regular old, regular old good liquid stuff. Yeah, we could use some regular rain. <laughs> yeah, we can. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. OK, 553 and 47 degrees. We're going to look at some lottery numbers as we go to break. Pick three, two, zero, seven. And the, uh, what is it? Fireball. Fireball. Zero. And your daily four is three zero nine zero. Fireball is five. Catch cash five two nine twenty one twenty seven twenty nine. Texas two step seven twenty five thirty thirty five. Bonus ball twelve. I've always wanted to change the world. How? Amazon for drugs. But you can't buy drugs on the internet. What if you could? Silk Road stars Nick Robinson as Ross Ulbricht, the young libertarian who used the dark web and Bitcoin to create an anonymous online drug market. Stop funding the state with your tax dollars and direct your productive energies towards the black markets. This guy's the first millennial gangster. Jason Clark plays old school DEA agent Rick Bowden, a composite of several crooked agents who work the case. Everything they know, they learned off a screen. 
not staring down the barrel of a gun. Clark says the Jurassic narc was a fun role to play. You know, he's beaten up and he's sitting in a computer, he's trying to work it out, but then he's still got that gift of like a proper police guy, you know, the ability to dig down, to look into it, to go after it, to put it together. Writer-director Tiller Russell says he loved the story's moral complexity. It's not easy to make a sort of simple judgment. Am I rooting for you or am I rooting against you or is my uh, allegiance changing? And so I wanted it to be complicated where hopefully you invest with these two characters. As the money and the danger mount, at least one of them is going down. I always like to think of it as they're almost like torpedoes, but you know, missiles fired right at one another. You do with my money. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It is now 558. Teaching young kids about math can be tough for parents. Still ahead on GMSA, we've got some ways that parents can sharpen early math skills in the home. And we've got another check of traffic as we look at TransGuide as we take you to the top of the hour break. More traffic, more weather, more news coming up on the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. Last week's historic winter weather led to some busy times for the San Antonio Fire Department and the San Antonio Police Department. We take a look at those numbers coming up. The United States surpasses a half a million deaths from COVID-19. I'm Mike Ajachi in Washington. Coming up, we'll take a look at some positive signs regarding vaccines. Outside with live cam, going to be another warm day when you compare to what we've been seeing over the last week or so. It's going to be nice. Justin Horn's got your forecast on the way. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Tuesday, February 23rd. I like that. A short sleeved afternoon. I, Ooh. you know, it was so weird because before we got this winter blast, I feel like we had a little bit of, it felt like spring. It was warming up and that happened. That, that thing happened and <laughs> that thing happened. <laughs> and we don't want to even talk about it anymore. There were blooms, <laughs> there were flowers yeah. and I now know. it's off. But you can still roll down the windows this but afternoon. But pollen count looks a little low, so that's good news. Pollen count is good, and uh, it's going to stay low, I think. We're sort of like in between seasons here, so mold is low, mountain cedar is low. Hopefully we'll get mountain cedar just completely off the board here soon. We should be almost there. Uh, as we look at the weather headlines today, chilly start, but a sunny and warm afternoon. And we could see some showers, some uh, cooler weather on Thursday. A pretty good bet, uh, at least a little bit of rain. Uh, it did step outside just a second ago. There are a few clouds trying to move in. No big deal. I still think we're off to a mostly sunny start. We should see plenty of sun today. 39 Bandera, 40 Honda, 47 Canyon Lake, 47 right now in New Braunfels. In the forecast, Texas up to 76. That's a little bit warmer than yesterday. We were at 74 yesterday. Uh, winds will kick in out of the south 10 to 15 miles per hour. Starts to bring in a little bit of moisture and then rain chances, as I mentioned, kick in late in week into the weekend. OK, let's talk about the roadways this morning. All in all, looks like there's a lot of green, a lot of good situations. A lot of good situation. Only real things, Justin, we have are a couple of stalled vehicles uh, here and there. So that's something to uh, look out for this morning. Good morning, everybody. A lot quieter than it was uh, last week. Uh, but we do have uh, one. Now we have one stalled vehicle. We had two. So that's why there's a plural there. But we have one stalled vehicle. It's at uh, 90 in Zarzamora to watch out for. But that's not really impacting your travel time on 90 from 1604 to 35. Uh, 11 minutes uh, westbound, 11 minutes eastbound. So that is uh, fairly good. And looking around uh, the region, 19 minutes all the way in from Castroville, uh, 24 minutes on 87 from Lavernia, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle, 28 minutes on 281 from Belverde. Last week we had some times that were 45, 50 minutes to an hour. So we'll take this right now. Here's Transguide, the upper level at uh, Calabria is open 151 at 410. Traffic is building, so uh, you might want to take some uh, extra time uh, this morning. No many tie-ups or slowdowns at the moment, but a lot of people getting out there on the road. So we'll have another update coming up. David, Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. This morning, San Antonio police are trying to learn more about a shooting that left a 10 year old in the hospital. Police say it happened just before 10 last night on South Hamilton near South Zarzamora. It's over on the west side. Now they say another juvenile is the shooter, but believe it was accidental. However, that other child ran away with a gun and neither the child nor the gun have been found. Police say the victim is still in the hospital in critical condition. 
Well, new this morning, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect. They say stabbed a man twice overnight just south of the downtown area. It happened at a Circle K gas station near the intersection of Steve's Avenue and Roosevelt just after 11 o'clock last night. Police say three men were involved in that fight and one ended up stabbing the victim twice in the chest and the arm. As the victim tried to defend himself with a big rock, police say the suspect took off. One person was detained by police, but police let him go because they said he did not hurt anyone. The victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. The unusual weather we had last week created some dangerous conditions in the Alamo City, but that didn't stop our first responders. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown and explains why last week, as you might guess, was one of their busiest ever. Stephen? That's right, David. It sure was. Thousands of calls were weather related calls that is were handled between the San Antonio Fire Department and San Antonio Police Department and the conditions outside made the response even more critical. Well, the San Antonio Fire Department does tell us that between February 14th and the 19th, they responded to a total of 9,199 total incidents. And just some of those calls included 3,991 EMS responses, 295 oxygen refill responses, and 130 structure fire calls. Now, SAFD also helped five hospitals in service with water operations, and they also helped with the transfer of patients. And during that same time frame, San Antonio police tracked over 1400 crash calls for service. They also helped TxDOT monitor some closed highways, but they tell us that during that time, 20 of their vehicles were actually damaged because of the weather outside. Now, the San Antonio Police Department does say that there was a total of five weather related traffic deaths. They also tell us that one of their officers was injured last Sunday near Brook Hollow responding to one of those crash calls. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition at the time, but they tell us he is still recovering this morning. David, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. Well, this morning we do have an update to the CPS energy meeting we told you about yesterday morning. The company is still trying to figure out how to pay for the high cost of fuel during last week's winter weather. CPS Energy faced a wave of frustrated feedback during a board of trustees meeting yesterday. Dozens of CPS Energy customers criticized the utility for its handling of the winter event, especially the forced outages. And while CPS Energy has been examining ways to pay for the fuel from last week, several speakers made it clear that no power should mean no bill. Take a look at boil water advisories around our area. Most SAWS customers no longer have a boil water advisory. Looking at the updated map from SAWS, only people living in the far northeast and far northwest Bear County still need to take precautions. And the Canyon Lake Water Service Company says all water has been restored to subdivisions as of late last night. However, Nearly all customers in Comal and Blanco counties are required to boil water. But if you live in Lantana Ridge, Cypress Springs on the Guadalupe or Riverwood Estates at the Woods of Spring Branch, you are still under a do not drink order. That means you should only use safe water to drink from the store or distribution sites. Well, to the pandemic, loc local health officials report 230 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and no new deaths. However, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the low case total is due to backlogged information from the state. Meanwhile, he says the positivity rate is now at 7.5% and the COVID-19 risk level for the county is moderate. We will get another coronavirus update this evening in our 6 p.m. newscast. And if you were set to receive your second dose of the coronavirus vaccine at the Alamo Dome today, there's been another delay due to last week's weather. The city of San Antonio says the supply for today's second dose appointments did not arrive. So the city is rescheduling all appointments for today at the Dome to Thursday. It will take place at the same time and the same place. Well, this morning we are remembering 500,000 people who have died across the country because of COVID-19. President Joe Biden commemorated the lives lost in a ceremony yesterday. Meanwhile, the push to vaccinate Americans pushes ahead. ABC's Ike Iduchi has the latest. This morning, a solemn signal. The National Cathedral rang its bell 500 times Monday, once for every thousand deaths. Fathers, sons, mothers, and daughters like Ashley Bennett, who just given birth and met her daughter Eliza just once. That's the only time she ever got to see her in person, which breaks my heart. President Biden commemorating the grim milestone at the White House. The day will come 
and the memory of the loved one you lost will bring a smile to your lips before a tear to your eye. And for me, the way through sorrow and grief is to find purpose. As the nation grieves this morning, there appears to be hope. The average number of daily cases has plunged 74% since January. The average number of deaths also down 38% in the last five days. There's progress on the vaccine front as well. Johnson & Johnson now saying they'll deliver 20 million single shot doses by the end of March. If the FDA grants emergency authorization, which could happen as early as this weekend. Also, health experts are stressing the need to vaccinate quickly as the more contagious South African variant has now been confirmed in 12 states. And in the fight to reopen schools, a new report from the CDC suggests it's teachers, not students, who play a central role in spreading COVID in the classroom. COVID-19 spread often occurred during in-person meetings or lunches and then subsequent spread in classrooms. Yet positive signs this morning as New York and New Jersey announced a return to fans in the stands for sporting events. And in Missouri, a hospital unit cheers as they celebrate a nearly empty COVID unit. And researchers in a lab in Alabama are developing a COVID vaccine in the form of a nasal spray. Human trials begin next week. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Well, a blood shortage emergency is still in effect in the Alamo City. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is hoping to fill that need by hosting a blood drive. With the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center this week, the center says right now not enough blood is available to treat trauma cases. Severe winter weather last week made things even worse, which is why the rodeo decided to help. We lost over 2,800 units last week because of the companies and different blood drives that we had canceled. So. They allowed us to come over here, use their parking lot. They're inviting a lot of their volunteers to come out and donate blood. Well, the blood drive continues today and tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can make an appointment through the Blood and Tissue Center's website. Officials say people have, who have received the COVID-19 vaccine are still eligible to donate blood. It is now 611 and 47 degrees. Hundreds of sea turtles rescued from the cold along the Texas coast. We have some good news. They're going to be released today. We'll have the details from the, pa the Padre Island National Seashore. And poetry is a long-standing art form around the world and here at home. Coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at the life and impact of Phyllis Wheatley, the first African-American author of a book of poetry. Take a look outside with live cam before we head to break. It's 612, 47 degrees. Traffic looks like it's flowing smoothly out there. Justin hopefully has a nice smooth forecast for us for the week. He'll tell you about it when we come back. Phyllis Wheatley is a famous poet brought to the United States as a slave when she was seven years old and was brought up by a family in Boston. They educated her and realized how brilliant she was. She learned to read and write and studied astrology, geography, literature, and more. She picked up poetry and by age 13, she became the first African-American to be published and gained recognition in England. But it was an uphill battle getting her work published in America as no one wanted to get behind the work of an African-American. Her achievements eventually helped spur the anti-slavery movement. So the people of San Antonio decided that it was fitting to name the new high school after Phyllis Wheatley. Born out of segregation in 1933, Phyllis Wheatley High School became the pride of the East Side for generations of black San Antonians. It was part of the cultural heritage for us. Through the years, your big brother, your cousin, your mother, your father attended that school, so you wanted to attend Phyllis Wheatley High School. The school closed in 1970 during desegregation. The building has gone through lots of change over the years and is now home to the Young Men's Leadership Academy. It is 616 and 47 degrees. Yeah, we had a couple of problems on the road earlier this morning. Well, let's check in with Samuel and see what's going on up there right now. Uh, things looking uh, pretty good, David uh, and Sarah. A couple of uh, stalled vehicles here or there, but we understand they should be uh, cleared shortly. Taking a look at uh, Bandera Road on the northwest side, uh, 10 minutes each direction. So that's looking good. No delays there. 
whatsoever. And here's a look at TransSky at ITN at ProBant. Looks like we uh, have something, so we'll check on uh, that vehicle uh, pulled over, but things seem to be flowing well. 35 at Thousand Oaks on the northeast side. Traffic is building. We're starting. That's been a trend since the beginning of the year. It's definitely seeing more traffic on the on the roads, guys. But so far, uh, nothing that really is going to have some delays. But that probably will change here in the next uh, 45 minutes or an hour or so. We'll be here to watch it. And Samuel, I just want to commend your coverage last week. He oh. had the day off, <laughs> much needed rest. So yeah, thank yes. you for everything you did last week. And, yeah. and Justin. Thank you too. Yeah. You guys have had. You guys were busy last week. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it was. It, it was definitely a, a heck of a week. One we will not forget. But we're uh, we're moving into some nicer weather now. Some beautiful weather yesterday, and uh, we'll get some nice weather again today. With uh, take a look outside right now with live cam. We've got uh, a few clouds here off in the distance, so there may be a little bit of cloud cover this morning. I don't think it'll last very long. And we'll see plenty of sun later today. 45 degrees right now. And west northwesterly winds at about 6 miles per hour. There could be a little bit of a wind chill this morning, but not much. Jacket weather to start. And then we'll see some short sleeves this afternoon. Take a look at this picture on our KSAC Connect. This is from Skywatcher. He always sends in great pictures. But uh, he says, please don't hate me for saying this. The February full moon is known as the snow moon. How appropriate is that? After uh, last week's uh, wintry weather. The full moon comes up on the 27th, by the way. We're almost there, but a great shot of the moon. Thank you so much for sending that in. 39 right now in Bandera, 36 Tarpley, 40 right now in Hondo, 50 in Pleasanton, one of the warmer spots, if you will. 47 New Braunfels and 47 up there in Canyon Lake. We're at uh, 49 Kennedy and 36 Kerrville in Fredericksburg, so those are some of the cool spots this morning. Looking at the dew points, the air is fairly dry right now, but as we get into, say, to this evening, dew points start to come up into the 50s. That's still pleasant, uh, but by tomorrow morning, you'll start to feel it a little bit more. I think there's enough moisture surging in that we'd start to deal with some fog starting off your Wednesday. And then by Wednesday afternoon, it's fairly humid. Dew points are in the low 60s, so that puts us in the muggy category. It won't last. Cold front slides through. Dry air comes back in on Thursday, and we get some cooler air in here as well. Looking at the forecast visibility, no fog this morning. There's a little bit along the coast, but not here. We'll see the fog, though, kick in tomorrow. And visibility could be affected across a large area tomorrow morning, so the morning commute could be a little more difficult for your Wednesday. Here's the setup across the country. Jet stream is sort of evened out after last week's big dip and buckle with all the cold air diving south. We're sort of more west to east here, which is going to keep things fairly quiet, although we've got a storm system that's building up there around Canada. That will swing south. Enough energy associated with this that we should get some showers out of it by the time we get into Thursday. So here's how the forecast plays out. Today, fairly quiet, sunny skies, clouds build in, some fog tomorrow morning. No rain yet. I don't think we get much rain tomorrow. It stays mostly cloudy. But by tomorrow night and into early Thursday, front comes through. With that, we should see some showers. And then as that energy starts to work in, we'll get cloudy skies and then I think scattered showers probably on Thursday. It'll be hit or miss stuff. Not widespread, not, not a rain out or anything like that, but uh, some rain around nonetheless. Forecast for today. Uh, 62 by 11 o'clock, 70 by 1 o'clock. We should be in the mid to upper 70s by this afternoon. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, and those winds could get a little bit gusty from time to time. Extended forecast, 75 tomorrow, mostly cloudy, but quite a bit cooler on Thursday. A high of only 57, 40% chance of rain, 20% chance on Friday. It does warm back up for the weekend, but we've still got rain chances to contend with both Saturday, Sunday, even into Monday. So a little more of an active pattern to finish out the week, guys. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say that somebody today is going to walk out of their house wearing flip-flops, shorts, and a T-shirt later on this afternoon with that, that temperature. Right That'll there. be me. Yeah, you? There you go. I'm all for it. Well, I take a picture of it, and we can have it on uh, KSAT Connect tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow morning, we'll show it. So I think somebody's right. going to. Other than you, somebody else will, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, 621 and 47 degrees. The hills are alive with the sound of Mars. After the break... We're going to hear from the first ever audio recording NASA took from the Red Planet. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA.
If you have obstructive sleep apnea and you're often tired during the day, you could be missing out on amazing things. Sinosi can help you stay awake for them. Once daily Sinosi improves wakefulness in adults with excessive daytime sleepiness due to obstructive sleep apnea. Sinosi worked for up to nine hours at 12 weeks in a clinical study. Sinosi does not treat the cause of OSA or take the place of your CPAP. Continue to use any treatments or devices as prescribed by your doctor. Don't take Sinosi if you've taken an MAOI in the last 14 days. Sinosi may increase blood pressure and heart rate, which can increase your risk of heart attack, stroke, heart failure, or death. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure. Sinosi can cause symptoms such as anxiety, anxiety, problems sleeping, irritability, and agitation. Other common side effects include headache, nausea, and decreased appetite. Tell your doctor if you develop any of these as your dose may need to be adjusted or stopped. Amazing things happen during the day. Sinosi can help you stay awake for whatever amazes you. Visit Sinosi.com and talk to your doctor about Sinosi today. The staff at Padre Island National Seashore will begin to release hundreds of rescued sea turtles today. The turtles were cold stunned by last week's extreme winter weather. That means the turtles were immobilized when water temperatures got too low. They were brought to the Padre Island National Seashore for some rehab and some warming. And many staffers say they are still rescuing sea turtles in the aftermath of the storm. Officials say they will release the turtles in deeper water because the shallow water is still frigid near the shore. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's barely, cool. but that was the rustling of wind, not the sound of a breeze. It was on Mars. NASA is continuing to release new footage from the Perseverance rover that landed on our cosmic neighbor. The video includes the final minutes of the rover's entry, descent, and landing, and that wind, the first ever audio recording from the Red Planet, NASA says they will continue to release new findings as Perseverance explores Mars. Not just regular wind. No. It's Mars wind. Mars wind. Very cool. 626 and 47 degrees. You can't spell Texas without taxes? Well, if you are filing yours, you have an extra couple of months because of the winter storms. That's good news. Yeah. And we're learning more about the engine failure on a Boeing plane in Colorado. We'll have the latest updates in our next half hour. Police say a child plus a gun has added up to trouble. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, a 10 year old in the hospital with a gunshot wound. I'll tell you more about it. Dangerous conditions in the Alamo City last week made safety a top priority for our first responders. How busy they were coming up on GMSA. Outside with live cam, sun is coming up. Going to be a gorgeous day today. Sunny and relatively warm. And good morning. It's Tuesday. It's February 23rd and it is 631. And I love that it's 47 degrees outside. Yeah. What I really loved was the weather yesterday afternoon. I was in short sleeves at the park with the dogs. And Justin, you said this trend hopefully will continue. At least for another day. Today looks gorgeous. Yesterday we got up to 74. This afternoon I'm thinking 76. So pretty close, right in range. Uh, right now we're at 45 at the airport, 42 Holotus, 41 Bernie Stage, 38 Bandera. We are watching some cloud cover. We've got the uh, infrared satellite going here, and we can see some clouds. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's some low cloudiness trying to move north just to the east of San Antonio. We'll keep an eye on those clouds, but still mostly clear here in town, seeing a little bit of cloud cover out west, too. It's also translating to a little bit of fog. We're noticing, noticing that closer to the coast, so places like Beeville, Victoria, down to Laredo. That's where we may see a little bit of fog this morning. Most of us are not going to see fog. Tomorrow morning will be a different story. We'll talk about that later in the uh, forecast. But uh, for today, 72, 2 o'clock, 76 by 4 o'clock should be another really, really nice day. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, and those winds may get a little bit gustier from time to time. Traffic has been fairly quiet this morning. I know last week was, well, 
busy this week <laughs> not so much well yeah we did have a stalled vehicle here Justin but within the past uh, few minutes or so it is cleared up so that's why they're zooming out the camera now uh, that was I-10 at uh, Probant uh, traffic is uh, building up so we can move past that now thank you very much and zoom out to uh, the wide view we still have a crash reported out here on uh, the east side, this is uh, 1516 between 1516 and Foster. Uh, there have been some delays there, but it looks like uh, it has been clearing too. So that's the, the good thing about that. Traffic time still fairly good coming in from Seguin, uh, about half hour into downtown San Antonio, 19 minutes on 90 uh, into uh, downtown, 24 minutes on I-10 uh, from Bernie, 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. David, Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. A 10 year old in the hospital after spending some time with a friend who had a gun. San Antonio police say it looks like the 10 year old was shot accidentally by the other child. Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters. A 10 year old was spending so Katrina, time with a friend who had a gun. What's the you have? Because uh, we know the child is still in critical condition. That was what police told us after he was rushed to a hospital late last night. Now, police got the call about this shortly before 10 last night. They found the 10 year old at a home in the 1700 block of South Hamilton, suffering from a gunshot wound in his chest. Officers told us they did not get a chance to talk to the other child, the alleged shooter, because he ran off. Still, they say they suspect that at least one of them was playing with a gun at the time. And again, police say they are handling this case as an accidental shooting. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, the emergency response to last week's devastating winter storm was almost nonstop. Local first han han responders handled thousands of weather-related calls and we're forced to quickly adapt to the unusual conditions. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown and Stephen, just how busy were they? Well, good morning, Sarah. Now this will definitely go down as one of the busiest for the San Antonio Fire Department and San Antonio Police Department. And despite the dangerous conditions from last week's winter weather, that did not stop our local first responders. The San Antonio Fire Department do tell us between February 14th and February 19th, they responded to a total of 9,199 total incidents. Just some of those calls included 3,991 EMS responses and 295 oxygen refill responses. The San Antonio Fire Department also helped keep five hospitals in service with water operations, and they also helped with the transfer of patients. SAFD did create four oxygen refill units as well as two rehab units to respond to structure fires, which provided some shelter for firefighters and residents. They also added an additional on-duty safety officer to respond to the many structure fires in the city. Right now, they say they reported 130 of those structure fires from last week. San Antonio police also kept busy with 1,400 crash calls for service while also assisting TxDOT in monitoring the closed highways that were closed again due to the winter weather. Now, they do tell us that 20 of their SAPD vehicles were actually damaged during last week's winter weather event. And David, Sarah, sadly, they report that there were five weather traffic-related deaths. Live downtown this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. David, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. The IRS extending tax filing deadlines in Texas by two months because of the recent winter storms. You now have until June 15th to file your returns. The IRS says residents of other states hurt by some of the same storms who live in FEMA declared disaster areas will also be given the same filing and payment relief. You can find out more about filing your taxes right now on KSET.com. In your morning headlines, new details about the mid-air scare for people on a United Airlines flight over Colorado. Investigators have revealed new evidence showing extensive damage to the plane shortly after takeoff. Yeah, the UK has become the latest country to ban 777's equipment with the same engine. ABC's Ken Smoten has the latest. This morning, investigators looking into what caused this engine to explode over Colorado are zeroing in on a weakened piece of metal. New images released by the NTSB shows the damage to the plane, including a gaping hole under the wing, suggesting some of the debris struck the plane itself. And there were also dings and, and nicks in other places on the wing, but there was no structural damage. Another image shows what investigators believe caused the explosion. Two broken fan blades in the engine. 
The emergency on the United flight from Denver to Hawaii started four minutes after takeoff. According to the NTSB's preliminary investigation, a fan blade broke off, tearing into an adjacent blade. Investigators say the first blade to separate showed signs of metal fatigue. In metal fatigue, you're usually going to find what I will describe as beach marks. Uh, it will be a series of, of marks uh, that you can vi visibly see, oftentimes with the naked eye. The broken pieces of the metal blades, considered key pieces of evidence, have now been recovered. One of them was lodged inside the plane's engine. The other fell onto a neighborhood soccer field. Overnight, the NTSB said the blades were being transported on a private flight to the engine maker Pratt & Whitney's lab in Connecticut, where investigators can get a closer look. Pratt & Whitney says it is actively coordinating with regulators. The NTSB says the agency will compare Saturday's incident to other emergencies in the past. We want to find out what happened so that we can issue recommendations to keep it from happening again. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Well, today, Congress is scheduled to hear from former secretary officials about what went wrong at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. That's when a group of former President Donald Trump supporters broke through security at the Capitol and interrupted the counting of electoral votes. Three of the four security officials testifying today resigned under pressure immediately after the attack, including the former head of the Capitol Police. Two of the officials will be speaking publicly for the first time since their resignations. Much is still unknown about the attack and lawmakers are demanding answers. The U.S. Senate will hold a confirmation hearing today for President Joe Biden's pick to head the Department of the Interior. He nominated New Mexico Representative Deb Holland. Holland says oil and natural gas will continue to play a role in America for years to come, but she stresses the importance for the U.S. to adapt to the changing industry of energy and embrace renewable energies. If confirmed, Representative Holland will be the first Native American to lead a cabinet agency. Well, Facebook will restore Australia's news pages after it banned people in the country from finding or sharing news on its service last week. The company says it came to an agreement that will support the publishers it chooses. Last week's ban followed months of tension with the Australian government, which has proposed forcing tech platforms to pay news publishers for content. And back here at home, KSAT and our community partners are going to be hosting a blood drive next week to help replenish a critically low blood supply here in South Texas. It was scheduled for earlier this month, but instead it's going to take place on March 1st and 2nd. It'll start at 10 a.m., last till 3 in the afternoon. The blood drive is going to happen at the Witte Museum. You can find out how to register on ksatcommunity.com. 640 and 47 degrees. Still to come, when it comes to teaching young kids about math, many parents may not feel confident or prepared. After the break, ways that parents can sharpen early math skills in the home. Welcome back into 643. A handful of new studies suggest students are losing more ground in math during the pandemic compared to reading. Researchers say it may be more difficult to teach some math concepts in a virtual classroom, but there is a role parents can play to help. Erica Hernandez has more on activities that can help families reinforce early math skills. For three-year-old Ben, if you can snap it together or stack it, it's fun. His mom knows it's skill building. Definitely important in terms of organization, just thinking ahead, planning things. It's also laying the foundation for math. Claudia Galindo studied 47 immigrant Latino moms whose children were enrolled in preschool. The education sociologist found the vast majority placed great value in math education and were already using cultural strengths to help their children with math. Sometimes some of them felt that it was difficult, that they didn't like it. But in spite of these dispositions, they still saw math as something that it was super important. Through workshops, Galindo helped these mothers capitalize on their strengths to teach math using daily activities at home. For example, when cooking, ask the child to count out and bring five ingredients from the refrigerator. When you're setting the table or you have a guest, how many people are coming for dinner to, today? Okay, what it is that you need? Researchers also found that moms in the study encourage kids to watch educational media. We really want to explore more about watching TV as a way 
to teach her kids math. Dora, Sesame Street. Researchers also suggested parents allow kids to watch when they are themselves engaged in math-based activities in the home. That can be anything from matching the shape of Tupperware containers to lids, counting money or coins, or something as simple as counting out loud going up and down flights of steps. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. I like to using food for improving math skills. I have four donuts, I eat one, how many I got left? Three. Now you need another one. Now you know. <laughs> Add one more in. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel, yeah, how are things work? looking out there? <laughs> <laughs> things are, are well, looking fine. You can play the game of uh, count the cars even uh, with your children. There you go. Uh, taking a look at uh, the map here, we do have a crash here on the east uh, side. This is just east of 410. Uh, between uh, Foster and 1516, uh, so there are some delays if you're coming uh, into town on I-10, approaching uh, the I-10 and 410 uh, interchange. Going up to the north side now, 281 coming down from Belverde Road. Uh, typical time, 8 to 9 minutes, and again, that looks very good compared to last week. And here's Transguy, once you get inside, 281 almost looks good, 281 at Hildebrand also. Uh, looking fine this morning and 410 at Starcrest. Traffic is building, but it is flowing. Speaking of math, I'm so grateful we have Justin Horn doing the math for us this morning and not David Sears. When, <laughs> <laughs> when Donut it, math, I like it. When it comes to these rainfall totals. Oh, uh, listen, I broke out the, the calculator earlier. I was yeah. plugging in the numbers. Actually, not really. These numbers are all provided from the weather. Service. You didn't get out the oh. slide rule or anything? I didn't. Rule. I didn't. <laughs> How about the abacus? Yeah. <laughs> it's going way back. <laughs> no, the the TI-82, you remember those things? Yeah. Oh, I had an 89, TI-89. Yeah. So you're younger than me. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's a look at the numbers. 2.24 uh, for the year. Uh, we're about a, uh, an inch below the average. So over the course of last week where we got all that wintry weather, the, the ice and the snow, really only accounted for about three-tenths of an inch when you're talking liquid. So it wasn't that much. It was enough to cause a lot of problems, obviously. Uh, but it wasn't enough when you convert it to liquid. Uh, Del Rio 0.66, that's after all the snow they had there, 3.52 uh, in Austin. So we're below average. We still could use a little bit more rain, and there is some of the forecast. 40% chance on Thursday, 20% chance Friday, some chances over the weekend too. So we'll have another shot here. Trying to get back up above average, especially after last year being a really dry year. We do have a few clouds out there right now. 45 degrees at the airport. West northwesterly winds at about 5 miles per hour. 41 Bernie Stage, 41 Rio Medina, 44 Castroville, 45 right now at Randolph, and uh, 55 down in Laredo. One cold spot up there, Ozona, checking in at 32, but we're not expecting a lot of freezing temperatures around the area this morning. Two points are trying to climb. We'll see some uh, two points in the 50s today, which won't be all that bad, but by tomorrow, Dew points jump into the 60s. I think that leads to a little bit of fog tomorrow morning. Cold front comes through, dew point falls off, and it builds back up by the weekend. Speaking of that fog, we do have a little bit out there this morning, closer to the coast. Nothing here in San Antonio. Tomorrow, though, it becomes more widespread. This is tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. This particular model has visibility going down to zero in a lot of spots. I don't think it'll be that bad, but there will be some fog around, so just keep that in the back of your mind for tomorrow's commute. 31 in Lubbock, 32 Wichita Falls, 30 in Amarillo, significantly warmer than we were looking at last week. If you remember last week about this time, it was 12 here in San Antonio. So what a difference a week makes, right? Uh, and you look across the country, there's nothing bitterly cold. Even Minneapolis is 32, which is actually pretty warm for them. 31 Washington, D.C., 32 in Raleigh. That big area of cold air has moved away. We're not seeing any more spilling out of Canada, at least for now. The jet stream is sort of evened out a little bit. We're getting mild weather here in Texas. Our next storm system is going to be up here uh, northwest of Washington State. This will be moving in as we get into Thursday. That'll bring some energy to the area and hopefully again, maybe some scattered showers. Here is how the forecast looks. Quiet today and then clouds build in tomorrow morning, maybe a little bit of fog. Frontal battery comes in late tomorrow night. With that, a couple of showers are possible, but I think our best chance of rain will be on Thursday. This model shows just a scattering of light showers, nothing that's terribly heavy. We don't think it'll be a washout. And looking at the forecast for today, very nice, up into the mid to upper 60s for our 70s for highs, I should say, 76. Uh, southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Winds can be a little gusty from time to time today. 75 tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Front comes through and then much cooler on Thursday. 57, 40% chance of rain, 20% chance on Friday, and then 30% uh, chance over the weekend with some of those warmer temperatures 
in the 70s, guys. So it's flip-flop weather, depending on how you look at it. You could look at it a couple different ways. Flip, so you're saying not like flip-flops you wear, like flip-flop, flip-flopping back Either and forth. Either way. Okay. It's true. Think about that one. David. Making my brain hurt, man. I know. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> a little early for that, huh? A little bit. <laughs> 650, 47 degrees. All right. Dealing with a pandemic is hard for any family, but for single parents, it can be extra stressful. Tomorrow on GMSA, ways to help one parent households thrive. And back outside with live cam. Flipping and flopping. You don't know what to wear today, do you? Oh my God, all confused, David. Stop confusing shorts, everyone. Well, the weather is also confusing everyone. Good morning. Coming up here, President Biden leading the nation in mourning, calling for unity as we hit that staggering milestone. More than 500,000 people dead in this country from the coronavirus. The administration is now looking to get the vaccine rollout back on track. And we got more encouraging news on just how good the vaccines really are. We'll have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. San Antonio police say a child playing with a gun may be the reason a 10 year old boy is in the hospital. Good morning. I'm Katrina Weber. The 10 year old was shot last night during what police are calling an accidental shooting. They found him at a home in the 1700 block of South Hamilton late last night. Police say that boy was suffering from a gunshot wound in his upper body and was in critical condition as he left for a hospital. Police say it looks like the shooting was accidental, that someone may have been playing with a gun. Police told us that they were trying to talk to another child who ran from the home with the gun. But the last word we had is that they had not found him. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We're going to check in with Samuel King, our traffic authority, before you head out the door. Well, a new crash uh, before you head out, Sarah and David, uh, here at 64 in Babcock Road, causing uh, some delays, so watch out for that. Uh, the situation getting better on the east side at I-10 westbound at 1516. 33 minutes coming in on I-10 from Seguin, though, into downtown San Antonio. 24 minutes coming into Bernie. Here's I-10 at the Y, looking fine this morning, Justin. Thank you, sir. Still in the mid 40s right now. We'll get those temperatures up around 76 this afternoon. We should see plenty of sun, but clouds will be back in place tomorrow. Some fog to start on your Wednesday and then some rain chances Thursday, Friday, even into the weekend. Guys, temperatures a little cooler on Thursday. We're going with butamus. Today. That works. Right. David likes <laughs> but he likes the word butamus. <laughs> All right, we'll go with it. Thank Thanks you guys so much for watching. We'll see you back here for Good Morning San Antonio at nine. In the meantime, have a great morning.